Good morning, friends. I'm so glad that you are here with me on this Friday, June 11th. I want to just say welcome to all my friends here on Instagram Live and Facebook Live, to my friends in the Widow Mama Collective Group and the Glory Chasers Christian Running Group. And I am so grateful to be at the end of another week. So we have officially started summer over here at our house and that means my kids are off of school and we are trying to find some new rhythms for our summertime as I'm still working and my husband is still working and we are also trying to plan in some times of rest and looking forward to travel and vacation. Um, being able to see some family and take some of those trips that we had to cancel last year. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm wondering for you, what do these days hold for you? For some of us, maybe summer signals a time of rest, slow living, um, doing some different things. And for some of us, it means more of the same, more working, um, a similar rhythm. It's not necessarily a break for you if you don't have kids and uh, maybe if you do have kids, it doesn't feel like a break because you have all your people back in your house. I totally understand that too. So I'm kind of recalibrating on that in that regard as well. So I would love to hear what do your summer days hold? What are you looking forward to? And I just posted about this uh, early this morning. I shared a picture on Instagram and on my Facebook author page of the beautiful hibiscus flower that is blooming in my front yard. And I love hibiscus. It reminds me of my grandmother. She loved to paint hibiscus flowers. Um, her name was Cora. And I wrote a children's book that is named after her, Cora Cooks Ponsit. And I love to just watch the flowers in my front yard and, and how they bloom in different seasons. I have mostly roses, but then I have a couple of hibiscus plants. <coughs> Excuse me. And I saw this beautiful bloom the other morning. And this hibiscus, it kind of has the the sherbet colors, the orange sherbet colors, or if you remember dreamsicles, I remember getting dreamsicles when I was a little kid from the ice cream uh, truck that would come in our neighborhood and it would have that like orange, orange sherbet kind of flavor with vanilla mixed in. And so there's just something about hibiscus that reminds me of summer. And seeing that hibiscus bloom this morning was like a signal in my heart, um, just a reminder that summer is here and it's time for transition. It's time for a new season. So I'm wondering for you, what does summer hold? What are you looking forward to in this next couple of months? Type it in the chat for me and I'd love to be able to just see what things look like in your world um, during this time. And if you're new around here, I would love it if you would just introduce yourself. Let me know your first name and your city in the comments as well. I know some of you are watching later on a video via YouTube or the videos that are posted on IGTV. But I want to say welcome to Prayer and Devos with Darina. This is a Friday tradition that I have around here. It's just my opportunity to show my face and to connect with you more personally, and we have been walking through the book of Psalms together. And today, we are going to be looking at Psalm 42. So if you've been here before, you know that I'm just going through the book of Psalms. And so every week, whichever Psalm kind of pops up is the one that we are reading through and reflecting on together, and then we pray over so today we are looking at a psalm that is another lament, and most of the psalms that we have looked at have been written by David, but this was an interesting kind of departure from that. This is a mass skill, which they believe is a musical term, and it is written by the sons of Korah. So as I saw that at the top of Psalm 42, I knew I had to do a little digging and figure out, you know, who are the sons of Korah? What is this all about? So the sons of Korah were an important branch of singers of the Kohathite division of Israelites and 
can read a little bit more about that in 2 Chronicles 2019. I'm not going to take too much time to go into it today, but just to say that these were the sons of Moses' cousin, Korah. And so I'm kind of imagining them as kind of like a boy band. They are like cousins who are getting together and creating these songs And so there's a couple of psalms throughout the book of Psalms that are written by the sons of Korah. Um, My children, I have three daughters, and they have been filling our house with music lately. Um, One of my daughters is learning how to play guitar. One loves to sing and uh, play piano as well. And my other daughter um, has a dream of learning the electric guitar. And then we had my niece here last week who also loves to sing and play And so they have been working on what they call the cousin band, and they've been creating lots of music, writing lyrics. My middle daughter is gifted at at writing lyrics. And so I'm just kind of imagining the sons of Korah as like a cousin band, that they're, they're getting together and they're writing these songs. And it's interesting because this one in particular, Psalm 42, actually takes on a very similar form to some of the other psalms that we have studied by David. And so I want us to kind of pay attention to that. And remember, as I'm reading, we always want to know what can we learn about God and what can we apply to our own lives. And so those are two things that we're going to be diving into with Psalm 42 today. Um, Before I get started, I just want to say hello to some of you in the comments. And I had asked you what the days of summer hold for you. I'm excited to just read a couple of these. My friend Vina says she's seeing her adult children all together. Oh, what a what a gift after the year we've had to actually be together with family and extended family. Um, Steph says she's from Tigard, Oregon, and she has um, some youth ministry opportunities and trying to get pregnant this summer. So we're going to be praying over Steph. That's amazing. And Esther who is saying lake time and planning her daughter's fall wedding. Well, that's something exciting to look forward to. And especially being by the lake, I think we're going to take a day at the lake with some family friends a little bit later in the summer. But I just, growing up in Chicago, close to Lake Michigan, and now living in California, very close to many lakes, I've come to appreciate those lake days. My friend Jade over on Facebook is saying that they're planning to refresh our family with once a month family bonding, like going bowling or mini golf or something like that, which I think is a great idea, depending on what your schedule looks like, just planning in some family days or family evenings if you can't um, get off to a family vacation. I know our family, my parents and my kids and husband and I were looking forward to a trip to Hawaii, which we canceled a few times last year, but we are looking forward to that. On June 20th, we'll be leaving, so next weekend um, and looking forward to some camping this summer with my brother's family. So much to look forward to. Well, friends, we're going to go ahead and jump into Psalm 42 today. And this Psalm again is a lament. So it is really the sons of Korah who wrote it crying out to God for deliverance. We have seen this form of writing throughout the Psalms, mostly from David, but now we're going to see it kind of in a different light. And I love the imagery in this Psalm, especially. So it says, as a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night. While they say to me all the day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God. For I shall praise him, my salvation and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and Hermon of Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love. And at night, his song is with me. 
a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me while they say to me all the day long, where is your God? Why are you cast down on my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Well, if you're just joining me, I am reading through and reflecting on Psalm 42 today. And I just want to say welcome. Glad you're here with me. Feel free to send a little hello or an emoji in the comments. And this is an interesting psalm written by the sons of Korah, as I mentioned before, kind of the cousin band, the boy band. And they are talking about this idea of the soul being downcast And yet in this psalm, we see just a sense of who they believe God is and is centering back on the truth. And so I think kind of the thesis or the theme of Psalm 42 is those three words, hope in God, hope in God. Repeat those words to yourself. Maybe type them in the comments. Let's agree together that there is hope in God. And that's what we're going to unfold as we look at Psalm 42 together this morning. So that first question that I always ask is, what can we learn about God from this psalm? And David is so wonderful at doing this, even in the times when he is a hot mess or when he's being pursued or when he's crying out to God. He is still naming the character qualities of God. He's still centering himself. He's still bringing himself back. And we see that the sons of Korah are doing something similar here. So we learn in verse 2 of a living God. It says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Now this phrase, living God, is important. It's important for us to just key into because the God of Israel was a God who was very much alive and very much in conversation, he was very much caring for his people and working on their behalf. And he is alive today as well. And so living this side of the cross, the New Testament being also part of our faith journey, we know that Jesus, God's son, died and rose again and that he is alive and well today and working among us. And so as we think about this time period when the sons of Korah might have been writing, there were many people who were worshiping other pagan gods during this time. But to recognize that they served a living God, a God who was active and engaging and caring for them, not a God who was dead, not a teacher who was from the past that they were just following his teachings, but a God who is very much active and alive. And so we we learn from this that God is a living God. The second thing we learn that pops up in verse five and that I mentioned before is that we can hope in God. Let's center on that phrase today, hope in God. God is our hope. And we see that even in this time when the authors of this song are in distress They are cast down and it says um, just this idea that as the deer pants for water, so my soul longs for you. So there's this sense of longing. There's a sense of suffering. Um, We can imagine this sense of anxiety, the sense of depression that is being described here in this psalm. And yet that phrase pops up, hope in God. And so recognizing that God is a living God and God is our hope. The third thing that we can see through this psalm is the idea that God is the epitome, the example of steadfast love. And it's one of my favorite character qualities of God that we see all throughout scripture. We have talked about in the past this idea of hesed in the Hebrew, meaning a God who is merciful, who is loving, whose love is enduring, It's this sense of justice and mercy that comes together, this steadfast love. And so in verse 8, it says, By the day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. 
And so we see that the psalmist is really centering on that idea that God still loves him, that God's love is enduring. And then the fourth quality that I want to mention that we see at the end of this psalm, verse 11, is that God is our salvation. And it says, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. And again, reminding ourselves that truth, that God is our salvation. He is our savior. He is the one who comes to save. And so even in this moment, when the sons of Korah are writing, when they are singing, that they're in suffering, they're in distress, and God comes. God is their savior. He is their salvation. But as with everything, I believe throughout the Old Testament, it is pointing to the story, the gospel, the good news of Jesus coming in the future and recognizing him as our savior. So it's like a great big arrow that is pointing to the coming of Christ as our savior. So four things we learn about God. He is our living God. He is our hope. He is steadfast love and he is our salvation. Now, one of the things I want to note as we reflect on Psalm 42 is this beautiful and strong imagery that is throughout. And actually, there are many songs that have been um, written and recorded using these words of Psalm 42. And even this morning, as I was listening to these verses again, I was thinking about a chorus that we used to sing during worship time as I was growing up in my, my small little church in the south side of Chicago, where I grew up. That says, as the deer pants for the water, my soul longs for you. And I just always had that image of this deer in the forest bending low to drink from the water. And actually on Monday of last week, my family had a chance to go to Yosemite National Park. My niece was in town. And so we were doing some hiking with the family and we went down to the river at the end and got to dip our toes in the river. And as we were walking back to our car, we actually saw this deer who was in the field. And so just just seeing this beautiful creation and just feeling that peacefulness, there was kind of a hush. There were several people who were standing around watching this sweet deer, but we weren't talking, we, we quieted our voices just in sort of a reverence and awe, just watching that deer. And so I'm imagining this deer who is panting, who is thirsty for water and how the psalmist is using that as a metaphor for how we are thirsty for the living water. We are thirsty for God, for the living God. So that's um, a beautiful image that we see. We also see this really strong imagery that has to do with water that's in the latter part of this psalm. And it talks about how deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and your waves have gone over me. And I think about as we were in Yosemite, we got to see some of these amazing waterfalls that were there. Um, one of my favorites is the Vernal Falls. And so we did a little two mile hike, which is actually pretty uphill for a lot of it, um, but not necessarily very long, where you can hike up to the bridge and you can see at that bridge, you can look up and you can see the majestic Vernal Falls and this amazing power of the water that is pouring over the rocks and that just flows all the way down the mountain. And so I think about God as being like the roar of those waterfalls, that he commands those waters, that he is powerful. And as the psalmist is thinking about these images, also how empowering that must be to start in a place of suffering and sadness and mourning and depression as he talks about. But then he's reminding himself of who God is and that God is powerful and that God is majestic and that God commands creation. And then in verse nine, we say, I say to God, my rock, and just calling out that God is our foundation. He is the one that we can depend on. He is like that great rock, like like those rock and stone figures that we saw in the distance. We, we were in Yosemite and we came out of that famous tunnel and we got that tunnel view and we could see in the distance the half dome rock and we could see El Capitan, which is a huge rock face that even some rock climbers 
who are very brave and maybe a little bit crazy try to climb up and we could see um, the Yosemite Falls and the Bridal Veil Falls. And so just being reminded through God's creation, through nature, that he is our rock, that he is our foundation, that the one who created all of these things is actually the one who we can depend on. So I love these images here of the deer panting near the water, of the rocks and of the water that is rushing, the waterfalls, all pointing us back to God. But we see in these words also that there is this contrast that these the writers, the boy band, as I mentioned, the sons of Korah, they're writing about a time in their life where they are cast down in their souls. They're downcast, where they are asking the question, why? And so we see in verse 5 and 11 that they are what I'll call in the why zone. It says, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? And then in verse 11, why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? So it's a repeated phrase, um, maybe even like a chorus if we were singing a song. And yet I was taking note of these questions that are in Psalm 42. In some ways, kind of rhetorical, but in other ways, just seeing how human they are and how we can relate. So I'm wondering, friends, are you in the why zone right now? Are you asking God why? Are you wondering why is this certain thing happening? Why are you suffering in this way? Why is your child, you know, struggling in this area? Why are you watching your parent who is suffering from sickness or your friend who has just received a diagnosis? Why? And here's the thing that's amazing about our God. He can handle our why. He will sit with us in the why zone. He can handle our questions. And so even as the writers of this psalm are grieving and depressed and in anxiety, we can see that they are resting in the truth of who God is. And they're making this effort even to pull themselves out, so to speak. And so I want us to learn from this. The first thing I want us to remember is that God can handle our questions. The second thing is that we need to remember the times in the past where God has been faithful. So for me, when I'm out in creation, I often am reminded of who God is. I'm reminded of times where he has been faithful in the past. And I want to challenge you to do that today or this weekend to take a little bit of time, whether you're walking in your neighborhood or out on a run or maybe sitting on your patio looking at your flowers, wherever you are in the world, that you would take some time to reflect on this idea of God's faithfulness. How has he been faithful to you in the past? Write it down in a journal, speak it in a prayer and just thank him for the ways that he has been faithful to you in the past. And I have found in my life that when I take time to actually pause and reflect and do that, even in times of grief, even in times of intense struggle, that the act of doing that actually helps to lift me from despair. It doesn't take away my problems, but it helps to center me back on the truth. And that's the third thing I want us to take away from this psalm today is to let the deep truth wash over us. So it's like the water that we're dipping our toes into on a hot day after we've been hiking all day. Let us remember that God is near, God is our hope, and God is our salvation. And so let's remember that he's been faithful and call out those specific times when he's been faithful. Even right now, if something comes to mind, I wanna just urge you to share in the comments a few words or a sentence or two. How has God been faithful to you in the past? How have you experienced his steadfast love? We're going to pray in a few minutes, and I want to just pray in thankfulness over those things. And then number three, just being able to center on that truth. Maybe it's a character quality of God that we talked about today that was especially meaningful to you. Feel free to type those in the comments to remind yourself and to remind us as we pray. We talked about him being the living hope, the living God, the hope the steadfast love and our salvation. And there's many other things that even emerge from this text, but let's remind ourselves who God is and let that deep truth wash over us. 
So friends, we're gonna go ahead and move now into a few minutes of prayer. I wanna ask you to join me wherever you are. If there's something on your heart, I wanna urge you to go ahead and type it in the comments if you feel willing to share it publicly and I'd love to pray over that. Otherwise, always feel free to send me a private message or a direct message on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go ahead and pray together. Lord, thank you. Thank you for today. Thank you for Psalm 42 that meets us on June 11th, 2021. God, I am so grateful for you and for your character that helps me to center. This week has been uh, a little bit stressful for me personally as I've been trying to recalibrate uh, to having kids at home and I have several projects in front of me that I'm trying to finish up before we go on vacation. And so I feel that level of anxiety that has kind of been rising. And so Lord, I pray in this moment that you would bring me back to the center of who you are, that you are faithful to us, that your steadfast love endures forever, that you hold all the details of this life in your hands, that I can trust you, that you can give me the energy I need to finish my work. I pray um, just with some of the comments here on Instagram, I'm so grateful for as uh, Dwight S. S. is saying that you are provision, that you have provided and that seeing that provision over and over him again, that you are Jehovah Jireh, that you're our provider. And I know that to be true in my own life. Lord, thank you for the manna that you give us each day. And there are some who perhaps are feeling, um, you know, just unsure and uncertain of the future. And Lord, you don't show us all the details of the future. And I'm so grateful actually that you don't because I know that probably my heart cannot handle that. And I think about things that have happened in my own life and how you've led me day by day. And so I pray that for my friends who are listening right now, that you would lead them day by day, that you would continue to provide, that you would be our manna, and that we would not complain about the manna, but we would be grateful for your creative provision, that you give us this manna and this quail as you gave to the Israelites in the wilderness. And Lord, I pray that we would never grow sick of it, that we would have a deep gratitude in our hearts for that that you provide for us every day. I want to just thank you that you were faithful to my friend Esther here on Instagram and helping her to find um, those missing papers that we had prayed about last Friday. Thank you that you care about the little details, Lord, and that we can we can call those out and rejoice in those. I want to just thank you also for um, the way that you have encountered Steph over here on Instagram in her private worship, as well as corporate worship time, and that we could just be in awe of you, Lord, and how you meet us in worship. And we see that all throughout the Psalms, David and the sons of Korah and other psalmists, how they meet you through music. They meet you through the words and the worship that happens here in this, in these Psalms. Lord, I want to just thank you for the continued healing that you have brought to my friend Jade over on Facebook. We thank you that you have given her all these signs of encouragement along the way in regards to her health. And we're grateful for the way that you are a living God, that you are engaged with us every day, every moment, that you are not a God who is dead in the grave. You're not a teacher from the past, but you are one who lives and walks with us, who cares about us as your special creation. And I pray specifically for Jade's children right now that you would be with them, Lord, that you would just remind them in specific and creative ways that you are present. I pray that you would just overwhelm them with a sense of your presence, that they would not become lukewarm, Lord, but they would see their need for you. And I just agree with those prayers with my friend Jade over on Facebook as well. God, we thank you that you are a God of hope. We thank you that you meet us even in times of suffering that are described here in Psalm 42, even in times of anxiety and pain, 
whether it's physical pain or emotional pain, you meet us in those times and you meet us with your presence and a strong sense of hope. And we're so grateful for that, Lord. We thank you for the hope of your son who died on the cross for us. And we thank you for the hope of salvation, which we have today. And I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for joining me today as we were reflecting on Psalm 42. And I loved hearing a little bit about what you have planned for your summer and um, just being able to kind of celebrate that we're all in a new season and just, um, you know, as things are kind of opening up in the world, we know that COVID is not completely over, but just uh, I have been encouraged by some of the mandates that have been lifted and the opportunity to travel again and even seeing on social media pictures of families that are being reunited after a year of social distancing and staying at home and it's encouraging to me. And I wanted to read a little bit from a resource. You know I love sharing resources and so this is a summer book that I'm reading called Growing Slow by my friend and editor. Actually her name is Jennifer Dukes Lee and she is writing about hope and I really love what she writes here on page 25 of her book. She says, the secret to healing your hurried heart begins with step one, holding on to hope as if your life depends on it. Hurry wounds a hope-filled heart. Christ in turn will heal it. I don't say this because I think it's true. I say it because God promised. Because of Jesus, we have living hope, not a dead hope. Biblical hope is a confident expectation. It is the full assurance that God is going to come through as we press seeds into the dirt. Slow down today and let the living hope of a living God engulf you. And I just wanted to close with that quote from Jennifer Dukes Lee in Growing Slow, this new book, because I think it so much embodies what um, this psalm, Psalm 42, that we just were reflecting on is about hope in God, that God is our hope and that we need to keep returning to that hope. And that for those of us who are believers, that we believe that hope is actually what propels us into the future. And actually hope is eternal life that we have. And so I just, um, I wanted to just share that quote with you today. If you're not a part of my Glory Graham newsletter group, I would just invite you to hop over to my website right now, darinagilmore.com. You can share your email and I am giving away a copy of this book, Growing Slow, this month. Every month, actually, I give away a copy to one of my Glory Graham subscribers of a book that I'm reading. And so someone in the month of June who is part of the list will get a copy of Growing Slow and actually a bonus resource, which is called Courageous Habits, and it's an amazing new planner that's put out by Dayspring that helps to really encourage creating some habits um, over the next year and a half. It's a really beautiful planner, and I'm excited to give away Growing Slow and the Courageous Habits Planner. So come join me over on DorenaGilmore.com, and I send out a little newsletter every Saturday, which will find its way into your inbox. Consider it like a personal letter from you, I'm from me to you, and. I look forward to seeing you again next Friday, friends, at 7 a.m. Pacific Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for joining me for Prayer and Devos with Darina today. Blessings to you, and I pray that you are reminded of the hope that we have in God.